Hello beautiful people another video from Mexico but this video is a little bit different by the way I hope all you guys are doing great once we finish our meal we will be ready to hit the road this dish that I am eating is called misiote which is means lamb meat cooked in the skin of maguey's plant uh, and it is cooked with the red chili it's absolutely delicious next to our ranch there is a huge area with a tall wall I have been curious about this purpose of the tall rounded wall for some time now despite some suggestion that it might be used for animal feed storage I believe it may actually belongs to the gasoline distribution junction possibly for storage of black tar crude oil maybe to confirm my suspicion I plan to climb up and investigate the structure myself there may be a deep hole at the top wow the top is completely flat I thought there would be a big hole in here probably they filled it up with uh, dirt but the view from here is fantastic these houses that you are looking at those are originally built for Pemex worker who worked in the Mexican petroleum industry. Pemex is a petroleum company for Mexico. It's a huge company, multi-billion dollars company. Currently the area is abandoned but the petroleum pipeline is still run through this land. So who is currently residing in this abandoned property it seems that some locals have taken up residence in these uh, homes without a charge and a few have even made a renovation assuming that Pemex worker will not be returning although there is a possibility of government intervention to evacuate the property but there is a high chance that it may not going to happen do you know what is the meaning of Hua Chocoleros? I think Hua Chicoleros, that's what they call here. Those are meanings that who is stealing gas. But let me explain you a little quickly. Nearly 13 billion pesos equivalent of approximately 670 million US dollars worth of gasoline has been stolen annually since 2018 through a illegal activity. Now as a chocoleros, this involves the installation of covert outlet by thieves who divert gasoline from the main pipe to a separate container and sell it on the black market or to the private household. In response, the president of Mexico, Manuel Lopez Obrador, has taken significant measures to combat this crime. He already put a military stations along to this pipeline all over in Mexico to make sure this is not happen again currently gasoline can only be stolen when the pipes are full meaning that when the pipes are uh, pushing through this refined petroleum through point A to point B this is the only time they can steal gasoline as a precaution the government has temporarily shut down operation until they can ensure proper security measures are in a place. Unfortunately, this has caused a shortages of gasoline nationwide in all the gas stations. Today I'm excited to take you on a journey to the beautiful rural area of central Mexico. My relatives own vast land and we will be visiting two of them. Our first stop will be at the land owned by my good friend Javier and his family. 
he will take us around and show us where he grew up and where he spent his teenage years. This is the house of Javier's grandparents and his father born here. And he born here, he grew up here. It's a very small house. Uh, his teenage, when he was 12 or 13 years old, he moved to bigger town. Although it is now nobody living here, but the land is still under their family's uh, ownership. I think this dog is really mad, upset, behaving like a Dracula. While on our way, there's a little house here. The dog kept barking at strangers, means us. Eventually, the dog started following us and became friendly. In my opinion, when a dog feels secure, they tend to establish a friendship. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mm. Good dog. Javier family own eight hectares of land and has eight siblings. So, the land will be divided equally among them. Each sibling will receive one hectare of land. This area is peaceful. Just imagine building a small bungalow here, equipped with solar and internet connectivity, would be nice. This land is mostly used for farming, and there is some area that also has a lot of mature trees, but there's a slope, a lot of rocks, probably not suitable for farming. Under this land has a lots of rocks. Uh, constructing a house could be challenging. Now we will proceed to our second land which is owned by my sister-in-law. It's a massive property which is so vast that even they have not explored every corner of it. Our journey will start at point A and take us all the way to the end of land, which is a point B. Let's get going. We arrived here. Uh, our truck is there. It's a small uh, house. I think those are farmers. They take care of this, all this land here. So there is a reason for we stop here uh, for assistance from a knowledgeable local farmer who is well acquainted with the area to help us for navigation. The view, the view is magnificent. I would love to have one land here and uh, maybe two bedroom house built. Enjoy this view. There's no people here that much, quiet. It's all farm for corn and cebada, which is uh, for beer. That's all they grow here. And I'll have some maguey as well, those cactus. This is totally deep in the village. These people, if they want to go to buy anything, meat, vegetable, they have to go all the way over there. It's approximately 30 minutes drive. Not bad, but the road is pretty bad though. Mud, and uh, especially if it's raining, it's difficult. Or Jeep, or something like that. Uh, small car will be very difficult. Let's go, we're gonna, this is our base. Now we're gonna go inside the land. Uh, 150 hectares of land is huge. You can even build one country, one city, it's huge, 150 hectares. You know, I do not know how much in a square meters or a square foot, but I have to calculate it later. I would like to share some information about this land that's currently on the market for sale. The property originally spanned over 150 hectares. However, some of it's been sold uh, now leaving about 105 hectares of land, which is equivalent uh, to approximately 260 acres. The exact selling price is unknown, but I have heard it's around 2.3 million US dollars, 
or slightly higher. If anyone interested to buy this land, the below description has my email address to contact. You know, I'm not quite sure how this land is managed as it appears to be completely isolated. It almost resembles a rainforest. The land is too much. So it's driven all the way up. So my in-laws try to show that how big land they have. Huge, 150 hectares, oh my God. That's like, you look from the left to the right, to the back, to the front. As much as you can see, this is all their land. So let's go up and check it out, what's going on, okay? Oh, look at that. Our path is currently obstructed by a fallen tree, huge tree, posing a challenge to our means of transportation in and out from the forest, of course. It is crucial that we create an alternative route or alternative way to get to the path. You know, just imagine in the event of a vehicle breakdown, we would need to walk a difficult four hours journey down to the nearest village. Wow. It seems this tree was pretty tall and probably died long ago. And the wind somehow knocked it off. Here, no cell phone signal, no Wi-Fi. And if you are coming to the forest like this, uh, you have to be prepare yourself. Enough water. Maybe your car break down and you need to have to survive uh, with food and maybe tent or something that you need to be stay in the night all just forest millions of trees lots of animals here snake rabbit fox black bear no deers coyotes it is not possible moving this tree aside so i believe we have to create an alternative path to go around the tree so better off going around from the left side because I do see there is a more space and the guy that uh, helping us, the farmer, the who is navigating us. So he said, no, that's the only way we can bring this truck around so we can avoid the tree. However, there's a lots of overgrown trees, bushes, uh, small trees, I mean, those need to chop it off before we uh, drive the truck around. It will take a little time. Cut all those branches. Imagine if you didn't have that tools, uh, it wouldn't be possible. We try to go more up. It's a kind of uh, mountain land they have, including they have also flat land as well. This is a kind of experience I never had it before. You know, surprise with a, a dead tree blocking the path but that's good when you travel or wherever you go you still always travel right it is considered as a travel you go point a to point b it's a travel so travel is beautiful things you always need to be know that what you can expect from the traveling right uh, that's why you have to carry your backpack your water your little food in there you never know what's going to happen car could be break down and then you need to expect to walk. So you have to also wear shoes comfortable. I, I hear only the birds chirping. Wow. Quiet here. Marinita, ¿tú quieres manejar? Sí. ¿Sí? ¿Tiene experiencia? Sí. ¿Sí? ¿Puede? No, no. ¿No? Sí. Bueno, dale. Es por cáncer. ¿Eso qué? ¿Cáncer? Sí, es por cáncer. ¿Sí? Sí. ¿Cómo, cómo se llama eso? Hierba del puerco. ¿Cómo? Hierba del puerco. ¿Hierba del puerco? Sí. Y esta piedra no pesa nada. Es ¿No? Para, es para tallar. Ah, oh, sí, no, sí, para sí. Para tallar este, que se ponga bien. Ya la llevo porque... Es la... volcánico. Sí. Eso.
Samuel, Samuel muy poderoso. Sí. Power. Ya no me la pata. <risa> Cabrón. Take out those bushes. Everyone can give a little hand to help as a teamwork. Hope there is no other surprise uh, waiting ahead of us, such as a landslide or another kind of road blockage. Because if there is something happen ahead of us and there is no any space to turn around the truck, we probably need to reverse the truck and driving backwards until we find a better spot to turn around. But hope that is not going to be happen. As I said earlier, this is the first time all of us going through this path. My sister-in-law never came this far. It is a so vast land with no one cleaning this path for a so long time. And I see it has been overgrown. You see, Mexican woman, strong, almost like Hercules. Lots of work. Imagine if you're yourself only. Oh, forget it. You need to just return it back. Since you have a lot of people with us, everybody helping. Okay, people, you need this machete to come in the forest. After 35 minutes of working everybody together, we have created a passage. So now we're gonna drive around and get back to the same path and keep going. He was able to do it. My brother-in-law is going up and let us walk. <laughs> it's kind of a hot day, but don't worry. I have my machete. We everybody got back into the truck. Now we are keep going up. It's uphill. There is a narrow path, uh, lots of bushes though. Uh, there's another uh, tree was in the middle, but that was a smaller one and uh, we was able to clean it up immediately. It appeared that the timber company purchased these tall trees uh, from my uh, sister-in-law in every five years, but there are limitation on how many they can sell due to the regulation set by the Mexican government to restrict deforestation. Both sides has lots of bushes and the branches hitting the car, I mean the truck. It already scratches all the paint. The window is open because it's hot. We don't want to put air condition so the engine can have more power. So every time passing the branch it goes through the window, I have to duck it to not to get scratch. It's really deep forest now. The path already uh, 
not good enough to visible. There's lots of wheat and all tree branches from the both sides. Oh my god. This is like in African jungle, you know. The path already been grown a lot of wheat. You even cannot figure it out, it is a path. Branch is stuck on this. See that? Guess what? We have another tree blocking the path. So our friend who take care of the ranch, he went there, he tried to cut it off. Let's see what's going on, okay? is so big you never know what's going on uh, my brother-in-law Martin he doesn't know he never came in this part because land is infinity you know it's keep going so they never need to come here so when they sell the wood the trees those um, loggers that they only come here and cut the tree they take it and that's it um, but this is a totally surprise ¿Cómo se llama tu amigo? Celso. Celso. Celso is our uh, guy who take care of the ranch. He's not cutting the tree. This is Mexican way. It's called Gome Chingas. <laughs> Chingas mucho ar arbol. <laughs> Chingadera. Uh, uh, this is all uh, words you say. It's expression. So we were able to pass. Tree was shot on the side. We do not know what's going to be more surprise ahead of us. Chingas, mucho. Una hora. ¿Por qué no te bajas, Claudia? ¿Por qué no te sientas? Sientas mejor, no? In the back, in the truck bed, we have our uh, family members sitting in there because inside the truck we don't have enough space. So uh, they are sitting in there. So all those bushes and the brushes and the branches is hitting their face and everything, you know? This is totally expedition. This is uh, basically Mexican African jungle. You don't want to come this kind of place without a guide. So the ranch guy who take care of our, this land, he's our guide now. He know okay, what is what. That's why he was preparation with his ax, with his machete and everything. Finally, we have arrived on the top. It's beautiful here. It's totally wild. Nobody came here ever. These, all the pine trees and everything. I mean, their land, their land is still keep going down that way. But I think that's enough here. You see, oh, you see that mountain right there? Their land all the way up there. And we've been driving almost 45 minutes and the land never finished. I'm here today, Mexican. Get <laughs> down. Oh, so they have to put camera in the forest over there somewhere to make sure some uh, people come here and it's still the wood, means the tree. You know, this logger theft is the biggest theft around the world. It's not only in Mexico, you have in the United States, you've probably seen a lot of documentary. But they come in the night, they cut lots of tree, bring the machine and whoosh, gone because there's nobody watching them. Such a big land, it's impossible to survive. So only the land they have a more tree, they have a camera. Unbelievable. This is one of the travel expedition in Mexican forest. This land has the ownership of the mine. So if they find here gold mine, is the owner have it. 
So what I came to know just a few minutes ago, that they found here coal mine as well. They can sell the coal. If somebody can come from the coal mine and say build everything, and they can extract all the coal and sell it. So, but you know, coal is going to be slowly uh, disappear because environmental issue. Uh, nobody want anymore use coal. They, everybody want to use solar, electric. So, I'm not sure. But you see that farm over there? That's for potatoes. They want to grow potatoes there. There's a millions of trees there too. Beside what we pass through when we are driven all the way up here. So. Even you buy this land, you can just get rich with just selling the wood, the trees. That's it. But you know what? If they make this road at least some good condition, then it will be very easy for them or anybody can come here. Because of the road condition is so bad that scary also, you know. You cannot come here with a small car it has to be four by four I mean also in Mexico when you have a, so much land uh, there's a restriction of selling the land you can sell up to three times so let's say this land all the way you're looking at they can divide up to three times and sell three times but more than three times they don't let you sell so I do not know why if it is your land why you cannot sell it uh, my in-laws, they were thinking, make it plot by plot and sell it. That's going to raise them more taxes. If they make all the plots by plot, so let's say they have 155 hectares land, right? And let's say they do one hectares land as a one plot. So they need to make 155 lots. In that case, each lot will be have a tax. So tax will be go 150 times higher than whatever they pay right now as a one land. If somebody has lots of money, uh, millions of dollars, they can use it as a forest, selling wood, make some bungalow here. Because this is a really beautiful place. If I have that land, that area over there, and if I have money, I mean, I would put some uh, nice hotel, like a cabin. Aki! They're calling me. There is maybe snakes here. So careful. That's true. You don't want to come here without a boots preparation for facing a snake. But I don't have a boots. I think snake get scared when they hear human is coming. They run away. You see, to jump on it. So I need to go over that fence. It's a barbed wire. Okay, I think I can go. I hope I don't scratch my ass. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Oh, oh, my pants got stuck with the Arriba, hold my legs. Oh, oh my God. So the land you've seen from the top, and when I crossed this fence, that was the limit of the land, all the way down that direction. And this behind me you're looking at, is another land for another person. Somebody on this area. I'm gonna go under a tree, under the shade, relax a little bit. You see, I'm wearing a Mexican cap, hat, vaqueros. If someone done a crime and the police is looking for him, probably this kind of place, best place to hide. They will be never find him. <laughs> I enjoy being in the countryside and driving through the dirt road. It's quite thrilling though. 
At times, I find myself wishing that I were young, if I were young, I mean, so that I could live off-grid and cultivate my own vegetables, fruits, trees, chicken, ducks, and lambs. Imagine never having to worry about mortgage payment, credit card debt, or a shortage of food. And as for electricity, there will be no bills because obviously choice is solar power, right? Torta. This is lamb, torta de barbacoa. Mm. Tastes good. My niece, Marinita, she's also eating. ¿Qué comiendo? Quesadillas. The ambience is extremely tranquil and calm. Except for us, there are no noises from the vehicle or people around. The birds are singing and the wind is rustling through the trees. I can just imagine after the sunset when dark take over. I can only imagine how scary it would be. The suspense is already giving me a goosebump. It's also feasible to train dragon. You can train a couple of dragon here and no public interruptions. Means it is so secluded that you can do whatever you like to do here. Stop in a little uh, place in the village, and they have a store. We're drinking local cerveza. ¿Cómo se llama? Barilito. Barilito. Cheers. With barilito. Click the bell icon for notification, and don't forget to subscribe. If you like my video, then give me thumbs up. All right. Adiós and hasta luego.